Hi, in this video we'll take a detailed look at how to install Arch Linux on a legacy BIOS computer with the MBR partitioning scheme. Alright, so once you've logged in into your computer, what you want to do is open a web browser and then go to sourceforge.net slash project slash Arch Linux GUI. And for those of you who are new to the channel, Arch Linux GUI is a project wherein I provide a graphical tool, the basically the Calamares installer to install Arch Linux. So if you're familiar with Manjaro, you'll find this easy to install. So Arch Linux GUI, uh, ALG is equal to Arch Linux GUI. So I'll be using this abbreviation throughout this video. And we have three editions featuring the KDE Plasma desktop environment. And these are the ALG Pure Edition, which we'll be taking a look at today. ALG Minimal, which we uh, took, a, uh, took a look at, at the pre in, a, in a previous video. And then ALG Flagship, which we'll take a look at in the next video. All right. So for this video, I'll be uh, installing uh, on a legacy computer uh, using the MBR partitioning scheme. But this applies to all the three ISOs. Doesn't, it, it, it's not only uh, restrictive to the Pure ISO. And uh, the vice versa is true as well. So whatever we'll be doing with the other ISOs, uh, whether we're installing on the UAFE with GPT, uh, that applies to this pure ISO as well. So if you want to download the flagship edition, this is really up to you which one you want to download. Uh, there's a bit of audience in mind. So pure ISO is really pure. We'll take a look at that. Here is a little glimpse of it. So you can see the screenshots. And minimal one is a, a step above the pure ISO in the sense that uh, it comes with a few settings uh, here and there. And then the ALG flagship ISO is the fully featured complete ISO which you can uh, use. It's ready to use. So in order to download the flagship ISO, you can just click on the green button. Right now we want to focus on the pure ISO. So we'll come to files. And you can read the README, which uh, clearly distinguishes between the three ISOs. And then look at, we, we have a bunch of ISOs here from uh, which we can download. So Arch Linux GUI Pure, this is the one we want to download. All right. And if you are on Firefox like I am, then you will get a prompt in five seconds. On Chrome or Edge, you will get the uh, download automatically started on the bottom left. So this is 1.3 gigs, as you can see over here. And you can just click here to save file. Now I'm going to cancel this because I already have this downloaded in my uh, ISO folder. Actually, it should be in your downloads folder, but mine is a bit cluttered. So here is the ISO. Uh, I've put it in a folder called ISO where I have all the other ISOs. And before we do, before we make the bootable USB, I would like to talk about uh, the release cycle for those of you who are new to the channel. Uh, so Arch Linux GUI, since this is a graphical tool to install Arch Linux, I want it to be released uh, with the mainline Arch Linux. So every month, the first, uh, the first of every month, you get a new ISO. So as you can see, the, these are the March ISOs. You can distinguish them by 21.03. These three are the April ISOs, you can distinguish by 21.04. And the next month release will be on the 1st of May. Every 1st of every uh, month, you get a new ISO. So this is the release cycle, uh, the same day as the mainline Arch Linux. So we have, a, uh, we have downloaded the ISO, Arch Linux GUI Pure in this video. Uh, you can download any of the ISOs that I'm providing here. And then now what you need is a USB device on which you're going to burn this disk image to. So I'm going to insert a 16 gig SanDisk USB device. And you got a notification as well, right? So now what I'm going to do, uh, in your whatever folder you are, you want to open the terminal in your folder. So I'm in the ISO folder. You will be in the downloads folder probably. So open uh, in that folder your terminal. And then what you want to do is list the drives here. So I have uh, two devices, SDA the hard disk on which Fedora is installed, and SDB, the USB device, which I just uh, inserted into my desktop. Uh, it's 14.6 gigs, 16 on the packaging. That's not what we need. What we need is the name of the device. So in my case, it's SDB. So we want to you unmount this. So you mount slash dev slash SDB. And along with the drive, we also want to unmount the partitions. So you can see that SDB has three partitions. SDB 1, 2, and 3. So we'll just go ahead and put an uh, asterisk over here so that it takes care of all the partitions in the drive. So as you can see, we have unmounted all the uh, partitions as well as the drive. Now we want to format this particular USB device. 
So, we are going to type in sudo because this has to be uh, uh, with administrative privileges and then we are going to make a file system mkfs the type of file system we want to make is a linux compatible file system for simplicity in this video we will stick to ext4 since mainline arch also when we are doing the normal installation we usually use ext4 ok and then we want to take note of the name of the drive so name of the drive is slash dev slash sdb and then just uh, press enter and then you will be prompted to type in your password obviously because this is being done with sudo type in y for yes and then this will be formatted alright so as you can see we have got a notification as well and our device is formatted now what we want to do is basically burn this ISO or this disk image uh, into the USB device so uh, this operation is going to be uh, again with administrative privileges so you need to type in sudo dd uh, dd is the command by which we are going to do this and then type in if if means input file and then name of the file the name of our file is arch linux gui so you can just arch and then tab to auto complete and then of is equal to the name of the drive so the name of the drive is slash dev slash sdb and then we can go ahead and press enter but then uh, we won't get a output a verbose output so we are going to type in status is equal to progress ok and uh, hit enter and once we have pressed enter uh, the copying will start so the disk image will be copied to the USB device and this is going to take some time so I'll be back when this is done ok guys so as you can see we have a notification as well and we are finished with making the bootable USB all you have to do right now is reboot your machine you can keep the USB device plugged in so we are going to reboot our machine after restarting your computer press one of the function keys shown on the screen that matches with your laptop or desktop motherboard manufacturer to enter into the boot menu after you enter the boot menu you will be presented with a list of options one of them will be your usb device brand select the usb device brand and press enter in my case the usb device brand is sandisk so once you press enter on your usb device brand this is what you will see and you have a bunch of options here but you want to make sure the first one is selected and then press enter alright so once you boot up from your USB device this is what you get and the reason this is the pure ISO is because this is typically what you get when you install plasma using the TTY installer pacman s plasma and then enable your display manager of choice uh, in all the three versions of ALG Arch Linux GUI you get the SDDM as display manager so what I've already done is connected to internet and uh, in install the screen recording software. Well, this process is the, the process of installing all these three uh, all these three ISOs is completely offline. But uh, connecting to internet gives you the advantage of automatically detecting your time zone. So without further ado, uh, let's get started. In, let's get into the installation. And what we uh, what I'm going to be focusing primarily on is the partitioning uh, in this section. So in order to install what you want to do is press your windows or meta key and then search for install and then hit enter. Now if you want me to put the installer on the desktop tell me in the comment section I just didn't do that because I didn't want to make it look like Manjaro. Uh, this uh, process is typically going to take some 30 seconds or so. So meanwhile what you can do is select your language. Uh, I'll be install uh, language in which you want to do the installation. So I'll be doing the installation in English. Uh, and uh, once this is up we will click on continue so what this is checking for is basically whether I have internet connection and a stable power supply so since this is on a desktop I have power supply and I just connected to internet as well if you are doing this on a laptop make sure you have your power cable connected to the laptop so there it is so no, uh, we have already selected our language for the installation so we can click on next and since I have connected to internet my time zone has been detected which is Kolkata I am in India and if you do not have internet you can manually also select your time zone alright so I will keep it to Kolkata and click on next and then it also uh, according to your time zone selects your uh, keyboard layout which is wrong for me I don't use the Devanagari keyboard I use the English US keyboard so you get the point select your keyboard layout and then click on next and then in the last video just to save time we did the automatic uh, installer by doing the erase disk option but, it, but in this video we will be doing the manual partitioning so click on next and like I said we will be focusing on MBR partitioning scheme since we are doing this uh, let me just show you go back this is on legacy BIOS and we are doing this on MBR so 
what we want to do is you might have some partitions we want to click on new partition table and then uh, the type of table we want to create is of the MBR scheme and then we will be creating four, four partitions all these partitions are going to be primary partitions and uh, since there is uh, this is not a multi boot video we don't have to care about logical uh, partitions at all in this video all right so this is going to be a guide to make proper partitions uh, according to the MBR scheme so we will be creating four uh, partitions here like I said already uh, the first is going to be the boot second is going to be the root partition third is home and fourth is swap and uh, first we'll make the partitions and then I'll tell you why we are making these partitions so let's click on create and then what we want to do is allocate around 250 uh, megabyte to the boot partition the partition type for all the partitions like I said is going to be primary the file system is going to be ext4 and the mount point is going to be slash boot and then we need to set the flag so the bootable flag so under the flag section just make sure that boot is ticked and click on ok next we'll be creating uh, the root partition so as you can see I'll just cancel this this is around like 298 gigs available this is a 320 gig hard disk desktop hard disk drive so I uh, do not have any constraints here I'll go ahead and create uh, a 100 gig uh, root partition so 102400 what I've done here is just multiplied 100 by 1024 and that's what you need to do uh, for the root partition minimum I'd suggest is 50 gigs so if you are uh, allocating 50 15 to 1024 that's what you want to put here that will be the size in megabytes the file system is the xt4 the mount point is going to be slash root okay so you'd be asking me what is this partition going to contain for the boot partitions pretty obvious bootloader is going to come there in the root partition you'll have your Linux file system so you can somewhat compare it to your C drive which has all the Windows files but not exactly okay this contains the uh, Linux file system everything that uh, is important for the uh, uh, for the distribution so then now what we are going to do is create uh, the swap area uh, we should be creating the home partition first but then uh, creating the swap first uh, you'll understand why I'm doing this so swap uh, actually acts like a virtual memory so it should be equivalent to the amount of physical memory you have installed so I have like 8 gigs of RAM installed so I'll allocate 8 gigs of space for the swap area uh, the file system is going to be Linux swap and what we'll be doing this as is pushing this to the end of the space so what this means is this is the graph and if we leave it here it will be formed right after the root partition we want it to be formed at the end of the partition table so click on just ok you can see that swap area has been created here and we have 189 or uh, like 190 gigs basically uh, free space for the home partition so the home partition is uh, similar to somewhat of your D drive well again not exactly and in the subsequent videos you'll understand why but the purpose of the home partition is to basically store your personal data videos music uh, pictures and basically all your personal you get the point right so we are going to uh, create click on create use all of this the file system is going to be ext4 and then uh, the, uh, the mount point is going to be home click on ok and here we have created four partitions let's re-revise uh, we have the boot partition root partition home partition sorry home partition and the swap partition now uh, the easiest way to do this is basically create the root and the swap partition which is again optional the root partition is not optional though but why did we go ahead uh, to create the boot and the home partition so see the boot loader is going to be stored in the boot partition and if we didn't create this partition it would be inside the root partition but uh, if you mess up something in the boot loader if you have partitioned your uh, drive like this all you have to do is to, to, to fix that messed up bootloader is to reinstall the bootloader and I know you don't understand this right now so I'll make a subsequent video where in I deliberately go ahead and break my bootloader and then we'll just I'll just show you how to fix that with just this live uh, bootable USB that we have created alright and same thing is for the root partition if you mess something up in the in your root partition let's say uh, in in the very un uneventful case you delete your maybe your etc directory all you have to do is go ahead and just reinstall your root partition and then your home partition like I said it's similar to D drive but not exactly that's because uh, the home partition also contains all your settings your wallpaper themes and everything so in the event that you mess up your root partition or your boot partition firstly all your personal data is going to be safe secondly all your settings your wallpapers your themes your fonts everything is going to stay intact 
nothing is going to be uh, uh, deleted or formatted. So that's the reason why we do the partition in this way. We separate the boot and the root and the home partitions so that they can uh, live peacefully as they are. And if anything goes wrong, especially uh, uh, things go wrong usually in the boot and root partition, all you have to do is use this bootable medium to reinstall these two partitions and I'll be making uh, separate videos for these two. Now we need to install the bootloader on slash dev slash sda. So if you are uh, aware of the TTY installation, this is basically going to run the command grub install slash dev slash sda. And we're not going to be installing uh, the, the bootloader on the boot partition. It's, it's going to come automatically through root in the boot partition. So in the next video, you'll understand what I mean. Uh, where in I'll deliberate, uh, deliberately break the boot partition as well as uh, the bootloader as well as the root partition. So basically, four partitions we have created, all are primary partitions, boot, root, home and swap. Boot contains the bootloader, root contains the Linux file system, home contains your file settings and all important files that are personal to you and swap is your virtual memory. We are done with the partitioning, just click on next and then you need to type in your credentials, what you want. Uh, to use so I'll just type in pure over here and then you can type in a very strong and memorable password which I'm not doing and then we obviously don't want this option to be checked because we want to enter our password whenever we boot on the computer the power on the computer and then this option the second one is optional uh, whether you want to use this so whatever you run with administrative privileges with sudo uh, if you want to use the same password you used to log in check this option I'm checking this and then click on next. This will show you the summary. All you have to do is click on install, sit back and relax and the installer will install uh, Arch Linux for you. Uh, I know the slideshows are a bit uh, not proportionate. I'll fix that in the May release and I'll be, this is going to take some time. So I'll be back when this is done. All right, so as you can see, we are done with installing Arch Linux. And one thing I like to uh, note here is that what we did in the pure edition of this uh, I, pure version of Arch Linux GUI, you can be doing this on all three editions, all right? So all you have to do right now is click on restart now and then click on done. So instead of rebooting, I shut down my computer so that I could show you the uh, boot up process. So I'm just going to power on my machine. And you'll see Arch Linux grub. So there it is. We have, let me just make sure it doesn't go away. All right, so there it is. We have Arch Linux installed using the ALG Pure ISO. So if you like the video, subscribe. And this is going to be the channel wherein uh, I'll be releasing more such videos, including the next one, wherein I'll deliberately break the bootloader and as well as covering uh, the UEFI GPT setup with the flagship ISO. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a nice day.